Ezekiel chapter 36. Going to one verse of scripture from the English Standard Version of the Bible. Maybe you don't have that translation. We got one for you on the screen. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse number 27. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to obey my rules. I'm going read it one more time. Ezekiel 36, 30, 27. And at the end of this, let's hear a greed amen when I finish with it. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statues and be careful to obey my rules. Amen. 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 This morning, part three of the Ignite series. We're going to talk for a few moments with this thought in our hearts and in our minds. The divine arsonist the divine arsonist the divine arsonist somebody put your hands together for the word of the lord father we thank you because the flower fades and the grass withers we thank you god but your word it stands forever god we come this morning god with hungry hearts and hungry minds we come god with hungry spirits looking for you anticipating you god to feed us god i've heard someone say many years ago god that expectation is the breeding ground for miracles and God, we need a miracle this morning. We want you to speak to our hearts and speak to our situation, speak to our lives. And God, we, we have anticipation, expectancy, God, that you're going to do it. And God, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. It's in Jesus' name. Somebody who love them on to shout amen. 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 You can have your seats. You can have your seats. The divine arsonist. We've been talking for the last three weeks about the ministry the work and the person of the Holy Spirit. We've been saying that whenever it is that you and I live a spirit-filled life, uh, that the third person in the Trinity um, is not a it. Uh, he's not a thing. He's not a feeling. Uh, he's not something that I can't explain. But no, the Holy Spirit is God himself. And when the Holy Spirit is a part of our life and evident in our lives, uh, we should have some fruit uh, that he is a part of our lives. Here it is for the last several weeks. As I've said, we've been talking about how important it is for him to ignite something in us. And I believe that it's not so much the problem that uh, we as believers uh, don't have the Holy Spirit because my personal uh, conviction is that when we receive the Lord Jesus Christ, we receive all that God has for us. But there is a turning point. Somebody say turning point. I believe that there is a turning point in the life of every believer that we should and we have to, if you will, release the reins of the Lord to our lives. Uh, to where it's more than me just coming down front and me repeating the prayer. It's more than me getting even baptized in water. But no, it's to the point to where I allow him to baptize me with his spirit. And when I allow him to baptize me with his spirit, I am saying, God, I'm selling out. I'm sold out. I, I I spent many years in retail with CVS Pharmacy, shameless plug uh, for CVS Pharmacy. I worked there as a store manager, and I can't tell you how many times on a Sunday or a Monday uh, the ad will come out on Sunday, and then you'll have an individual that will come in either on Sunday or first thing Monday morning, grab their buggy. They got their flyer in their hand, and they're whisking around the store looking for that sale item. And here it is. They get very, very upset if it's that early in the week and something's supposed to be on sale and it's not there they say they come to the counter where's the manager where's the manager because this thing just came on sale. so y'all do that too huh y'all and this thing just came on sale yesterday and now all of a sudden y'all are sold out and i say ma'am i'm sorry we're sold out they'll say do you have some on the end cap over there somewhere i say no ma'am we're sold out they'll say do you have some in the back room somewhere i say no ma'am we're sold out we'll say do you have some under your sleeve you have some under the counter I say no ma'am we're sold out in other words there's no more anywhere else and when you and I as believers are sold out towards the things of God and for the things of God there's nothing in a secret pocket anywhere there's nothing back in the back room somewhere there's nothing under the counter is nothing reservated in the back of my heart in the back of my mind I'm totally sold out are you look at somebody say are you sold out are you sold out you got to be totally sold out 
to the things of God. Uh, I love Ezekiel because Ezekiel was one of these type of individuals that we would say he was totally sold out. Ezekiel, a prophet, one of the major prophets that we know, the major prophets, there is Ezekiel, there's Jeremiah, there's Daniel, and there's Isaiah. And then you have 12 minor prophets. Uh, the difference between the major prophets and the minor prophets is not that they had a major word and the other ones had a minor word. No, the difference is one just wrote much more than the other. Here it is, you have Ezekiel, Jeremiah, Daniel, and, 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 the, uh, and the four one here it is you have all four of those they have their major word and the other 12 who I did not try to name the other 12 they just had a shorter message here it is it doesn't matter if God gives me an, a, a lot to do or God just gives me a little bit to do everything is major in the eyes of God see sometimes and we approach the things of God as if because I'm not the pastor that don't require him that, that that's not required of me because I'm not an evangelist because I'm not the preacher because I'm not the elder I'm not the missionary I'm not the bishop I'm not the apostle I'm not on staff I'm not this I'm just a pew member I'm just a laity but here it is God calls all of us and God gives all of us a word no matter if your job or your responsibility is pulpit ministry or your responsibility or job is pulpit ministry come on here y'all miss what I said because I believe that all of us have pulpit ministry whether you stand behind the sacred desk and herald the word of God or whether it's just simply raising those 2.5 children that you have or whether it is being a good wife or being a good husband all of us we have a portable pulpit everywhere we go and whatever it is that God has given us to do we ought to do it to the best of our ability Ezekiel was one of those men of God that no matter what circumstances he was in no matter what was going on in his life he gave God his all he was totally so out in Ezekiel chapter 1 that's not on the screen just read it when you get a chance in Ezekiel chapter 1 the Bible talks about it was the 13th year and the fourth month how Ezekiel said he was among the captives and they were down by the river come on here I don't know down by the river they, they, they were down by the river and here Ezekiel was there and the Bible says the heavens were open and he saw visions of God Ezekiel was down by the river literally in Babylonian captivity literally being carried away from his home but here it is at the lowest point in his life and even even in his ministry, the Bible says Ezekiel saw visions of God. And here I want to come and encourage you today because maybe you're in a low point in your life right now. Maybe you seem like you're a captive right now. You know you can be in prison and not be behind bars. You know you can be in jail and not have a warrant or a deputy coming to make sure that you're where you're supposed to be at. Here it is. You can be in lockdown and not to the point to where you're physically locked down but some of us are in prison in our mind some of us are in prison in our spirit some of us are in relationships that have us in prison where the love is gone where the intimacy is gone and here it is I come to tell you that God allows you and I to be in these circumstances and these situations not for us to wallow not for us to tuck and run but no God allows us to get there because he wants us to be able to see him in a real way that we've never seen him before. Ezekiel was in captivity and the Bible says it was there that he saw visions of God. And can I tell you at your lowest point, that's where God can speak to you the loudest. At your lowest point, that's when God can show you something that you've never seen before. It's at that point when we're hungry and we're thirsty after the things of God. You know, it's something about trouble that drives us to the cross. It's something about trouble. You know, you can hear God a little bit clearer when you don't have that all the money that you want. You know, you can hear God a little clearer or you can seek his face, I should say, whenever it is that things are not going the way you want them to go. But here, it's, it's then and only then that God wants to speak to his people. And Ezekiel, he had a tough task at hand. Here, the people of God, as I said, were on their way to Babylonian captivity or possibly already there. And Ezekiel's job was 
supposed to preach comfort to a people that were discomforted. Ezekiel's job was to preach comfort and deliverance to a people that were physically in captivity. Ezekiel's job was to encourage a group of people that seemingly when they look at their circumstances and look at their lot in life it seemed like there's nothing to be encouraged about. I don't know have you ever been there before the way you've been in church and you've heard the word you've heard that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You've heard that my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You've heard he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ever ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. You've heard the word. You've heard what God is saying but here is like when Jesus resurrected from the dead in Luke chapter 24 the disciples on the Emmaus road one brother named Cleophas he told the resurrected Jesus I heard what the women were saying they were preaching to us and telling us about the resurrection he said but it seemed like it was idle tales and at times we can be so consumed with our trouble we can be so consumed with what we're going through that we can hear all our favorite scriptures and hear the word over and over and over again and because I'm so locked into my trouble it can seem like it's an idle tale it can seem like the word is for it for everyone else but the word is not for me but here Ezekiel was preaching to a group of people and preaching to people that here they were in what they were in because of their own decisions <laughs> they were in what they were in because of what choices they made <laughs> Ezekiel was preaching to a group of people who who had made the bed <laughs> And now they're lying in it. And, and, and here a lot of times in our lives, we, we oftentimes will shake a fist at God, but really we're the culprit really we're the reason why we're going through what we're going through we are the one that need to be taking the blame for the situation the people of God had got warning after warning after warning to repent to turn back to God but here it is they didn't hear the message but now they're in captivity but God he still is always a but come on help me preach your sideline preacher here help me preach here what, what, what am I saying here what God does I'm so glad whew, that God, he tempers his wrath with his compassion. See, that don't mean nothing to you because maybe you never, maybe you never got a spanking from the Lord. I, I, let me take me as a father. See, whenever I come down on my children because I'm a grown man, I can really inflict a lot of damage on my... I got three little girls and some brothers say they don't believe in beating their beating they daughters. But I say, no, you better touch them every now and then because them eyes, I, I don't care. I got to close my eyes and hit them. I don't care because them eyes be all googly. They be like, no, daddy, I'm sorry. Daddy, I'm sorry. But no, every now and then you still got to touch them because they don't understand how serious you are until you touch them. Now I, I know I'm talking to these 2017 parents. I know y'all believe in time out and y'all go sit down little Johnny. Be quiet Johnny but no I was raised by a mama that where she'll lay hands on y'all. They gonna help my mama. My mama was, I grew up in the house I thought my mama was a, was a WWF wrestler. I thought I grew up my mama would rock bottom me. My mama would put me in the DDT. My mama stone cold stunning me here. But we don't believe in that no more. That's why we got the problems that we have now. But anyway, that has nothing to do with my message. What I was saying was <laughs> that as I can hurt my child physically, I have to temper my wrath or even my power or my discipline that I don't hurt them. And here, even as I, as a father, knows how to temper what I do to my children, so does God. God knows how to temper what he does to us in disciplining us and correcting us that he does not destroy us. And here that's what God does. Us. Somebody ought to put their hands together for that because that's good news. So God tells the people, you're going into captivity. You're going to be in bondage because of what you've done. You're going to pay for your actions. And see, sometimes, let me clear up another dis, uh, disnomer. Let me clear up another misunderstanding. Because sometimes when we come to God, we think that coming to God is going to erase all the foolishness that I did. 
<laughs> let me let me slow down a minute. I don't want in my haste to get to my text. I don't want to mess this up. And here because we think that we've been living how we want to live for 30, 40, 50 years, and then we all of a sudden, Lord, I come to you, bend the knees and broken hearted, as if that's still gonna take away everything. No, you can be saved, sanctified, full of the Holy Ghost, and still got to pay that child support. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. You can love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, strength, understanding, but there's still gonna be a fica on your job. Y'all ain't gonna help me. If you don't know what fica is, catch me at the service and I'll fill you in. Here you can love the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, but there's some things you still got to pay for. You can't be out there blowing your money all your life and for years, been all at the club making it rain and pop blocking and dropping, and then all of a sudden when you come before the Lord, you want him to open up the windows of heaven. No, every now and then, homeboy. No, every now and then, homegirl. God will take us to the process of time that where I got to allow some of those seeds that I got in the ground, I need to allow some time for them to die. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> so Ezekiel is preaching to a group of people. He's talking to a group of people that's having to pay for what they've, what they've done. And God said, I'm going to deliver you. Look at it, Ezekiel 36, 22. He says, therefore, say to the house of Israel, thus says the Lord God, it is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations which you came. Here it is. God tells them, I'm going to deliver them. Now for 30 some odd chapters, Ezekiel has been telling them about their rebellion, telling them about what they've done. And now all of a sudden you see a, a shift in his message. And says, now God is not just full of wrath, but God is a God of comfort. And then he tells the people of God, I don't want you to get it twisted. I'm going to deliver you, but it's not going to be because of what you do. God said, therefore, thus says the Lord, it is not for your sake. Can I tell you that's the same thing that God told Moses or that Moses gave back to God when God was getting ready to destroy the people of Israel when they came out of Egypt and they had went around and they were doing all those things that God was not pleasing for them to do. And God said, I'm just going to wipe them out. I'm just going to kill them all. And Moses said, God, but if you kill them, what would the heathen say? What would the Egyptians say? What will they say? They'll say God was able to bring them out of Egypt, but God was not able to take them to their promised land. And here it is, God remembered his word. God remembered that, yeah, you know, I, 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 I see what you're saying, Brother Moses. I see what you're saying. And here my point is this, that God does things in our lives, not because I've dotted every I, not because I've crossed every T, not because I've done things so, so, so right or I've been so prophetic. Really, I haven't been prophetic. I've really been pathetic. And God said that I'm going to bring you out because of my name's sake. Look at verse 22. He said, I'm getting ready to act. Oh, y'all don't know when it he said, I'm getting ready to act. I'm getting ready to move. I'm getting ready to do something in your life simply because I'm God and simply because I'm good. Here Jesus said that God reigns on the just as well as the unjust. See, he allows things to come to in our life and come to us not because we deserve it, but no, because he's just simply good. And he loves us like that. I don't know about you, but I'm appreciative of the fact that I serve a God that will give me a just because kind of blessing i'm glad that i serve a god that cares about his name and cares about what it is that he has prescribed over our lives and he said i'm going to do this not because you deserve it because we're not saved by our works we're saved by grace through faith it's not because i've been baptized it's not because i came to the front of the church it's not because i know my bible from cover to cover but no it's because of jesus shed his blood for me and he died for me and not only did he die he rose for me and here it is I come into the family of God not because of what I've done but because of what he has done he said I'm gonna deliver you and I'm gonna do it for my name's sake so how you gonna do this Lord he tells us verse 25 I will sprinkle clean water on you <laughs> I'm gonna sprinkle clean water on you I wish I would have had me a little table and a little water I would have been sprinkling over here on these musicians to keep them keep them woke over here 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 I would have been sprinkling over here. I love y'all y'all always stay awake 
So here, here, you got to know, I will, I, I will sprinkle here. I'll sprinkle clean, especially right wrong up in there, right over there against that wall. There. That's why he on that wall, so he won't fall off the stage. So the Bible says he will sprinkle <laughs> clean water on us. And that's what God says. Then when he comes, when we come into a relationship with him, look at what it says. He says, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness and from all your idols I will cleanse you so here as we're talking about what God does in our lives and the work of the Holy Spirit and that's all I'm trying to do just uncover the work of the Spirit so you can let them loose in your life here the first thing I see right here in the leaps off the text what the Holy Spirit does for us he sanitizes us he sanitizes us. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He sanitizes us. What, what does sanitize mean? I'm so glad y'all asked. Y'all so attentive. It's early and y'all so attentive. Sanitize is to make, <laughs> sanitize it means to make a hygienic, to make hygienic, to make more acceptable. Here, this is what the Holy Spirit does. He sanitizes us. He makes us more acceptable. Look at the verse again, verse 25. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you possibly will be clean. You eventually will be clean. In the by and by will be clean. <laughs> now he said that you shall be clean from all your uncleanness. See, the first thing that we have to do when we come to God is we have to realize and admit that we're dirty. <laughs> that's the first thing that's the first thing you can't come to God and receive from God if you think you got it all made in the shade drink lemonade but no you got to admit and you have to realize that you are dirty and that you are in need of a good old fashioned spring cleaning you're in a need of a good old fashioned rub down scrub down you're in need of some Clorox you're in need of some ammonia you're in need of some Ajax you're in a need to be sanitized <laughs> What the Holy Spirit does, he cleanses us from all of our uncleanliness and from all your idols. See, let me slow down for a moment. Because we think idol worship is bowing down to a thing. We think that idol worship is having a little hobnob something in my house that I go and pray to every morning and burn some incense. But no, no, Paul tells us, New Testament speaking, that an idol can be anything. An idol can be anything that you place above God. An idol can be a house. God, I'm blessed me with this house. I'm going to stay home and sanitize. See, the preacher was talking about sanitizing, so I got to sanitize it. Yeah, I, I don't clean it uh, no other time but Thursday night and Sunday morning, y'all ain't gonna help me here. I'm a, I got to sanitize this house because I got to clean up what God has given me because I got to be a good steward over what God has given me. An idol can be a house, an idol can be a car that you got to wash and look at. Don't you know? No, you, you ever see them fellas? They got them nice cars, they don't park next to everybody else. They park way down there. And then you see them, they say, oh, they walking today? No, they just walking from their car. They walking from their car trying to go into the store because they don't want nobody. They hit their car. Now, I ain't got no problem with that because every now and then I do the same thing. So lest I be a hypocrite, I do the same thing. I don't want nobody hitting my black beauty. But anyway, here you got to know is what God does is that if that thing is in my heart, there's nothing wrong with having something nice and taking care of what God is giving you. But it's a whole nother thing. When I put that thing above my relationship, with God. God has no concern about me having things, but he don't want things to have me. Come on, help me preach it here. And here, an idol can be anything. I started with material things, but an idol can be a person. 
an idol can be a person yes it can an idol can be your husband an idol can be your wife an idol can be your child an idol can be your grandchild an idol can be your job an idol can be your ball and hear anything that pulls at your heartstring and can get more action and more dedication and more sacrifice than God that thing my friend has become an idol yes you should love your spouse yes you should love your children but I don't put anybody over my relationship with God I don't care how much I love I don't care how much you look like me I don't care how much you've been with me I need to put my relationship with God on the front of my life he tells me I'm to seek him first and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added unto us and in our generation that we live we live in a generation of Christians that put everything before the work of God and everything before the ministry of the word we are living in a generation that where we're more abreast of what's going on on live TV on must see TV we're more abreast of what's going on on reality TV what's happening to the housewives in Atlanta what's happening to the housewives in Jersey what's happening to the housewives there and this and that we look at we on all our soap operas and all oh come on y'all y'all are getting real quiet on me we on top of everything that's happening on television and I can't tell you nothing about the vision oh yes I am I'm preaching good I know everything that's on television I can't tell you about nothing that's going on in the vision of the house of God I can't tell you what's going on in my life here it is I got all this stuff and I'm consumed with all these things but my walk with God is apathetic at best he said I want to cling you I don't come to beat you up church I want to come to pick you up I want to come and I want to come and help you up. I don't come. I don't want to come to, to, to make you feel bad, but I want to make you feel bad. Y'all ain't gonna help me here. I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to soothe you, but I want to. I do want to school you here. I could be a rapper. Y'all ain't helping me here. Here, what God wants to do is He wants to clean us up. He wants to sanitize me. He want to make me more acceptable. Look at Hebrew writer. Hebrew writer says in Hebrews ten twenty two. He said, "Let us draw near with a what." true heart in full assurance of faith see some of us lord have mercy don't come to the presence of god or even participate in the things of god because we think we're too dirty see let me look at the other side of the coin because there are some of us that did some things and there are some of us that have have made some decisions and we think we're too dirty for god to use us we think we're too dirty for God to hear us. But the Hebrew writer says, draw near to God with a heart of full assurance. Full assurance of faith. And what does he say? With our hearts. What, 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 how? Sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed with pure water. The Holy Spirit sanitizes us. He should. Here it is. This is how you know a spirit filled life. A spirit-filled life or a spirit-filled person, their thoughts are pure. <laughs> it was the night before Christmas. <laughs> their thoughts are pure. See, when I'm a spirit-filled and spirit-led believer, I'm not trying to look for an opportunity to get in something. What's, what's going on tonight? What's jumping off? <laughs> y'all, hit me back. She coming in the room. Hit me back. Hey, y'all, y'all ain't gonna help me here. Yeah. See, a spirit-filled life. Y'all got that over here. See, a spirit-filled life is an individual that mind and heart has been, con their conscience has been sanitized. Instead of thinking about demon stuff or devilish stuff or sinful stuff to get into, I'm trying to think about how I can please my God. I'm trying to think about how I can serve the Lord in a greater way, in a more intense way. See, when the Holy Spirit is evident in my heart and in my mind I'm not looking for the line see that's what we say where's the line at what can I do to get away with this how close can I go how low can I go I want to know how low can I go I want to know how low can I go I want to know what I can do and God not spank me God not get me but when you've been purged and sanitized by the Spirit of God you're not trying to find the line because you're running after God with every ounce of strength that you have you're not trying to find what you can do and get away with so the man of upstairs won't get mad at you but no you're sanctified you're sanitized and God does something in your life 
He says we can draw near to him. Draw near to him with our hearts. Look at the verse again. Because he says that I will sprinkle clean water upon you. And you shall be clean from all your uncleanliness. And from all your idols will I cleanse you. So the first thing is he, he sanitizes us. The next thing I see is he sterilizes us. He sterilizes us. Yes, he does. He sterilizes us. You, you, have you ever sterilized something before? I remember when, I, when our children was on, on the bottles. Yeah, now and then, uh, you know, I'm the dishwasher in my house. Let me digress for a moment. I'm the dishwasher. I mean, anything that comes through the, through the, through the sink passes through my hands. That's why my, I shook somebody's hand the other day, and they say, you must, is it Don? <laughs> Palmolive? <laughs> Y'all ain't going to help me. <laughs> anyway, I got, I got them, soft, them soft hands. I'm the dishwasher, so, so that's why I went and bought all them plastic plates and plastic cups. But anyway, so here, <laughs> so I don't have to wash on it. Y'all ain't going to help me here. Put that thing down. You see that plastic? Oh. So God, so when, 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 when we had the babies, they was on the bottle every now and then, no matter how wonderful I, I washed them bottles, my wife would put it in a little container, and then she would put it on the stove or in the microwave and, and cut it up, and she would sterilize it. She'd be boiling this water because here, uh, I, it, it looked like I did a, a standout job cleaning. But here it is. It's something about sterilizing it and cutting that boiling water on that, that it really kills or deteriorates some things that I cannot see with my natural eye. To sterilize, and here it is, to, or to sterilize or to be sterile, I got a definition for you. It is not able to produce children or young. That's how we say when, when an individual is sterile, they can't have any children. They say they're not able to produce. Also, to be free from bacteria or other living microorganisms. So here, I'm saying that God sterilizes us. I'm saying that God cleanses us. What am I saying? God cleans us up and puts us in this boiling water and allows the Holy Spirit to be so in our lives. Look at the definition. So I won't be able to produce. Why does he sterilize me? Because I, I have sin nature. Uh, Psalms 51 and 5 says in iniquity we were all shaping we were all shaping in iniquity meaning that we're naturally prone to sin and if I'm naturally prone to sin the Holy Spirit has to help me out and how does he help me out not just by sanitizing me but he sterilizes me he puts me in some boiling water to allow those things that need to be killed to be killed in my life so I won't go around producing them in other areas of my life what oh y'all ain't treating me good this morning but I, that's pretty good there because there are some things in our life that we don't need to produce or need to reproduce there are some things that we inherited innately or generationally because my granddaddy was a tree and my daddy was a trip and here every now and then God has a sterilizer so I won't produce any more children after that kind y'all ain't gonna help me here every now and then God has to sterilize us and burn some things off of us and get some character traits and character flaws out of us so I won't produce and I will be sterile and what else does it mean it means to be free from bacteria and other living organisms what am I saying to you that the Holy Spirit burns some things off of us and washes some things off of us and cleanse some things off of us if we don't take care of those things those things will take care of us he cleanses us look at Jeremiah 33 and 8 he says maybe I'll help you on this I will cleanse you or I will cleanse them from all the guilt of their sin against me and I will forgive all the guilt of their sin and rebellion against me. God sterilizes so that where he kills the bacteria. He kills those microorganisms that if they stay there and fester and grow, they will turn into something else. And here it is, when we look at our relationship with God, see, I'm not talking to the angelic crew. I'm not talking to the ones that only had an overdue book at the library. The worst thing you've ever did was jaywalk when the light said don't cross. That's the only thing you've ever done. But for the others of us that have done some real things, 
for the others of us that know that we deserve a burning hell here it is some things we do we're not proud of there's some things that we do or here it is some things that we did that the person may have forgiven us but we haven't forgiven ourselves there are some things that no one even knows about <laughs> And I still haven't forgiven myself. But God tells me that he, when I allow the indwelling of the Holy Spirit to be real in my life, he will cleanse me from guilt. He will cleanse me and the way I don't have to be carrying around a burden for the rest of my life because I did this and because I did that because I shoulda, woulda, coulda. But no, God says he will cleanse me from all my guilt. Some people are not where they need to be at in their relationship with God because they've done so much dirt and they've done so much things. They've done so many things. They wronged so many people. They've hurt so many people. They've wronged and overlooked and did these different things and God is sent me here to encourage you today that God said when you let him come in for real though he said he will sterilize you he will cleanse you he will purge you and you don't have to walk around being guilty over what you did guilty over what you said guilty over what happened back way back when and God will clean you from guilt you know some people think God God is mad with them some people live in such a way that that they're paying for what they've done. Yeah, you do reap what you sow, but God isn't mad with you. Yeah, there is a season in your life to where you may have to, you have to own up to your bad decisions, but God isn't mad with you. If God was mad with you, my friend, you will not be here right now. If God was mad with you right now in hell, you will lift up your eyes. But the mere fact that you have life, the mere fact that you're alive and breathing and coughing and sneezing, it lets me know that God is not mad with me. And the mere fact that I see this Sunday, Sunday, May, May the 7th, 2017, it lets me know that God is not mad with me because this is the day the Lord has made I will rejoice and I'm going to be glad there and I don't have to live with guilt I don't have to live with anger I don't have to live with these things that have been haunting me don't you let nothing haunt you from your past I know this isn't for everybody but hopefully I'm helping somebody God isn't mad with you you got to keep it rolling because the Holy Spirit has has not only sanitized you, but he has sterilized you. Look, look at the text, Ezekiel 36, 26. Let me blaze out of here. He says, and I will give you a new heart and a new spirit. I will put within you. God is going to do divine operation with no anesthesia. He says, I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit oh my god see see this is the problem why we're running into so much trouble in our lives as believers because you trying to live a new life with an old heart that's a tweetable moment right there you're trying you're trying to you're trying to live uh, you're trying to live a new life with an old heart you're trying to have a new lease on life with the old mentality you're trying to do something for God with that old dirty stink heart and spirit but God said I want to give you a new heart <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself he says a new heart and a new spirit I will put within you and, and I will do what remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh so not only does God sanitize me not only does God sterilize me hear me good God sensitizes us he sensitizes us oh my goodness he sensitizes he said I'm gonna take away that stony heart stony heart meaning that it's like a rock my word can't get in that stony heart. God said, I'm going to take away that stony heart, a heart that were in one season of your life or before the Holy Spirit. You will hear the word preach all day long and it never bothered you. You will hear the word. You'll hear what you need. As many of us like me was raised in church. You've heard the message. You've heard the word of God. But because you have not allowed God to put you on the operating table, the word couldn't penetrate. 
And the only way you can receive the precepts of God, the concepts of God, the word of God, you got to allow God to do a little operation. And he said that I'm going to give you a heart of flesh, a soft heart, a heart that my word can easily go into. Because you know that God does not help individuals who don't know they need help. <laughs> And see, I'm saying, God, I want my heart to be sensitive. I want my heart to be pure. I want my heart to be right because I want you to speak to me. And here some of us have such stony hearts and some of us have such nasty spirits because God can't do nothing for us because we think we got it all together because it's always everybody else's fault. But man, I'm preaching real good. God, God sensitizes us. What do I mean by Sensitized. I mean the quality or condition of being sensitive. A person's feelings which might be easily offended or hurt. See, when you are a person that is sensitive, you just don't flippantly just say anything. Because you know you may hurt that person's feelings. When you're a sensitive person or you're aware of being a, a, a people emotions and how they may receive what you're saying, you just don't tell them off at a drop of a hat. No, because you're, you're sensitive. But when you, when God, hear me good, when God sensitizes us towards him, uh, I don't hurt your feelings. I don't want to hurt his feelings. Y'all ain't seen me coming today, boy. I tell you, I stayed up all night for that point. Y'all should have did me a little bit better than that. Hear what God does. God, he sensitizes us to his word. The well, I knew what his word said. I knew what his word told me to do, but it didn't bother me because I had a stony heart. But God takes away that stony heart and God gives me a heart of flesh and it makes me sensitive towards the things of God. No, baby, I'm not going to cheat on you, baby, because it ain't got really nothing to do with you because can I attest to you, baby? I know you're watching, but it's all good in the hood. I said if she was sitting right there. Can I tell you, after February the 19th, 2005, can I tell you, Miss Tammy, they started looking a whole lot better. Y'all ain't going to help me here. After February the 19th, 2005, they started hitting on a brother. You think because, see, I'm the still same old short, short rascal with a gap and a nice pretty hair. I was the same rascal back then, but it's something about when you got a ring on your finger. It's like it's a parasite, like it attracts folks. And here it is, don't put a microphone in the same hand with a ring on you think that's a repellent but no that make them come out the woodwork and I'm saying where you was back 2004 where you was February the 18th 2005 y'all ain't gonna help me here where you was yeah. <laughs> the day before <laughs> And here y'all ain't gonna help me here I've got no amens over there it's all right I'm coming over here to my <laughs> But here when I'm, when I'm sensitive to God or when God sensitizes me it's not even about my spouse anymore. It's about my love for God. Come on, help me here. See, it's not about the fact that I'm going to hurt you. It's not the fact that I don't want to wrong you. It's not the fact that I don't want to do you wrong, but I know that God is watching. I know that God is somewhere. And what God does, he sensitizes my heart so I can receive his word and be who it is he wants me to be. Look at what David said in Psalm 51, 7 Amplified Version. He said, my sacrifice or what I offer to God be acceptable sacrifice to God. He says to God is a broken and a broken contract heart. He said a broken spirit and a broken and contract heart. He said broken down with sorrow for sin and humbly and thoroughly penitent. He says such oh God you will not despise. In other words David said the way I come to God I come to God broken. I come to God sensitized because God tells me about his word. He tells me what I am to do. God has been so good to me that I can't mess up on him. God has been so good to me that I cannot go the wrong way because he's been so good he's been so merciful he's been so kind and here it is I come to him broken and see that's what happens when you get sensitized God breaks you down telling you you got to tell God I give myself away to you God I can't make it without you everything I have you gave it to me everything I know God you taught it to me everything I am God it brought you brought me to it and God I'm thankful and I'm appreciative of you God because you stabilized me and God 
God, you sensitize my heart. I don't know who I'm talking to in here. Maybe just me and a couple of other folks. But I'm just crazy enough to believe that you are appreciative of the fact that God has not only sanctified you, not only sanitized you and sterilized you, but he has sensitized you. Open up your word, God. I'm sensitive to your word. Speak to my heart, Lord. I want to hear what you got to say to me, God. I don't care if you got to cut me, then God going on and cut me. I don't care if you just want encouragement, then God encourage me. Whatever it is you want to do, God, I'm ready for your word. I got to get it out of here.